Are you seeing temperature fluctuations or bad spots in some of your prints on your Ender 3? It may be related to the temperature stability and I found what may be causing the issue which could be on your machine now or in the future. I'll explain it all right here at Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by these Patreon supporters. This is my original Ender 3. I've had a lot of fun with this. I've had it on the channel many times. I've 3D printed some rubber feet so it's quieter on the bench. And for that, I added the EZR extruder from CME CNC. This thing works with the real flexible materials like Ninja Flex that the stock extruder can't handle. And it'll print any other filament because it's the same extruder that's on the $3,000 CME CNC Artemis. Now, some people questioned if that was really a great mod for this guy. Well, if it's good enough for a $3,000 printer, I think it's good enough for this. But one problem I did have with this is temperature cycling. When I did this design for a full-size SD card adapter, this bracket that I designed, I noticed some variation which was directly temperature related. And sometimes I would see temperature variation right on a display. I tried a lot of different things, PID control, I checked the thermistor so many times that I actually broke it. And finally I said, forget it, I'm putting a whole new assembly. So I put a new hot end assembly, installed it all, reset everything up, and it was pretty good. And then the temperature cycling came back. It was very frustrating until this week it actually broke and gave me a min temp error. Which seems like bad news, but it was good news because you can find an error like that easier than you can find intermittent. But what turned out is that it's a very interesting problem that maybe other people have. So let me go deeper into what's going on with this thing. It's definitely in the temperature circuit. Let me show you how I fixed it. If you're not familiar with it, it'll show up as error min temp at the bottom of the LCD screen. Your hot end won't be able to heat up. And the little image of the hot end will show zero degrees both top and bottom. The first thing I did was shut power off and unplugged it just so I don't get shocked if I do something dumb. And I wanted to look at this visually first, make sure there wasn't obviously a broken wire that I missed before. So I took the shroud off, put it to the side, and checked the heater element, which looked fine, and the temperature sensor, which is held down by that screw. That all looked fine. I couldn't see anything broken. So the next step was to check this electrically. In order to do that, I need to get access to the circuit board that controls the printer. So there's two screws in the front of this cover and then you got to slide the bed forward and then there's one screw at the back and this one's longer than the front two. So I just spun it around and then got to that screw. And then once this screw is out, I should be able to lift this plate off. So I'll spin it around to the front again, slide the bed back and then try and lift that cover off. And it, it can already see it's loose so it just lifts off. There's a fan connected to it. I'll just throw this to the side. Now here's the wire that connects to the thermistor. It's on the last connector. And what I want to do is check this with a meter. It should be 100K ohms. I used a little two-pin header to slide into the connector. Then I connected the positive lead to one, negative to the other. There's no polarity on this, so it doesn't matter which way you connect them. And I'll set it to the resistance mode, and it says 104.1K. That's close enough. There's nothing wrong with the thermistor. But I did notice this. The connector is loose. This should be tighter than this on the circuit board. I need to check the solder joint underneath. And in order to do that, I need to remove the board. There's four screws that hold it. Three around the edge here, and then one right in the center. And honestly, these are not easy to get to. I was able to get the screws out. They're really tiny. It's probably going to be harder to put them back in. But I was able to lift the board. I disconnected the LCD connector. And I was able to flip this board over and take a look at the pins in that connector. If you do this, be gentle so you don't break anything. But when I looked at it, I could clearly see there was something wrong with that pin. I had a broken solder joint. Now this is pushed up a little bit because I wiggled the connector and pushed on the pins a little bit. But this was probably just barely touching and giving me intermittent connection. So any vibration in the printer, I was probably getting temporary disconnects. And that's when the temperature would drop. So clearly these pins need to be resoldered. This was the problem. This was causing the min temp error and probably my intermittent problem. I didn't film it, but I actually removed some of the old solder and I tried to push that pin back down and it wouldn't budge. So I had to solder it where it's at. So I just added some new solder and then I actually soldered the pin next to it. So that's why the pin looks like it's standing up. I did test the connector on the other side to make sure there's enough pin there and there's plenty. And because I used a water-soluble flux solder, 
with a wet toothbrush, I could clean this off and get a nice clean solder joint. So two nice shiny new solder joints. And yeah, I don't like that pin sticking up, but it does make a good connection. So now we can test it. Before I close everything up, I wanted to test this. So I pushed in the thermistor connector, plugged in the printer, turned it on, and the min temp error was gone. And I'm seeing 24, 23 degrees on the thermistor, meaning it's reading room temperature right now, but everything's working. I want to just run a simple test to see if I could get this thing to fluctuate. So I chose my CHEP calibration cube. It gives me a nice flat side to look at. And I chose this E-Sun like bronze filament. It's almost like a gold. I've used this before and I'll tell you if there's any flaw, this filament will show it. It's very sensitive to it. And when I printed it, the walls look smooth. There's no sign of any temperature variation. So I'll have to print a lot more with it, but it looks like it's fixed. Well, that seemed to fix the problem, and it makes sense. The solder joints on that board in general looked pretty cold. They look very gray. I probably should have resoldered all the pins, but I just soldered those two for now. We'll see how it goes. So far, it's been working great. If you've got a similar problem like this, I've seen people on forums saying they've tried the different temperature sensors and that can't seem to get it to work, check your board. Maybe you got a cracked solder joint too. That's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of these other videos where I help you fix problems. And if you want to support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just buy through the affiliate links in the description below. It helps a lot. It really does. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.